Good evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be exploring the history and geography of Anschluun in Jordan. Now, Anschluun is a very interesting little place because usually when you think of Jordan, you think of either, you know, the Jordan River or desert. Anschluun has neither of those things. Actually, it does not border the river or near the Sea of Galilee. You can see up there. It's close, but not quite. And it is not deserty at all. It is actually full of beautiful, lush green forest. It's very hilly. And the landscape there is perfect for um, lots of agriculture and farming very interesting little corner of Jordan. Definitely part of the whole Levant area where like, yes, you're in the Middle East, but it's pretty lush and beautiful for the most part until you go out into like these areas out here where it's not. But in this area, it very much is. So, um, you can't mention Anschluun without mentioning Anschluun Castle. In fact, if you like, just type in Anschluun into Google. Before you get the city, before you get the governorate, you get the castle. Its identity is very closely linked with the landscape here. And I'll talk more about the castle when we talk about history. Um, but actually, let me start off in history. It's a it's a very tiny little part of Jordan. I didn't draw the borders because it's pretty much just this here just a little bit of Jordan. Let's talk about the history of this area because being part of the Levant, it has such a long, rich history, right? So much has happened in this little corner of the world and Ajlun was a part of it all from the Assyrians and Babylonians conquering um, up into the Romans taking over. I tried to look. Apparently, there's an archway still standing that was built by Hadrian. How cool is that? So, it was part of the Roman Empire and eventually became part of the Byzantine Empire. And the Byzantines were very famously Christian. And this land was no exception. Obviously, a lot of early Christian history happened in this corner of the world, right? So there are already many Christians living here by the time the Byzantine Empire officially became a Christian empire. In fact, it is believed to be the birthplace and early residence of the prophet Elijah. And there is a beautiful little hill. I think it's like that one right there. I think it's barely denoted. Um, it is called Tel Mar Elias. Elias? I'm not sure to pronounce it. Um, a tell is like, um, in English we'd say a mound. It's like a hill, but it's more than a hill. There's history behind that little hill, right? And there are lots of really cool ancient Christian buildings, things there. Um, in fact, on top of the biggest hill was a Christian monastery. And one of the monks who lived here, or there, I should say, one of the monks that lived there was apparently the origin of the name Anshalu. I think that's the, like, Arabization of, like, the name of that monk. But it was on top of that hill in 1184 that General Saladin, one of the great heroes of Middle Eastern history, who fought back against the invading crusaders asked one of his generals, who was also his nephew, to build a fort on top of that hill where that monastery used to be. And that fort became Ajlun Castle. And it was a very, like, picture like a medieval defensive castle. That's exactly what it was. It had a moat. It had the windows to shoot arrows out of, like those narrow windows. It had the towers. Um, it had storage for, like, not cannonballs, because they didn't have cannons, but like trebuchet, 
lightning bombs that they would light on fire and sling them over at the invaders. A very big, intense castle. Old-timey medieval crusader castle. And it stood. It was never invaded. It successfully defended the area because this was an important area to defend because once you get past this area you enter in with all the, the trading areas down in here and up here so it was an important little spot to defend and they definitely did super cool however it was about a hundred years later the mongols came through and wiped out the town they did what the mongols do they damaged the castle pretty badly, but after the Mamluks took over, which would eventually become the Ottoman Empire, the people who ruled the Ottoman Empire, they rebuilt it and restored it and made it good as new. Of course, it's not good as new today. It's pretty crumbly, but um, the Ottomans did their best to keep it up and the current Jordanian government has really been keeping it up uh, maintaining it as best as they can and um, even have a little museum inside with cool old artifacts it was hit by a couple of really bad earthquakes but um, two things came out of those earthquakes one, the damage that was caused was all repaired and almost good as new like back how it was back during the crusades and also some more artifacts were uncovered from at least like the last big earthquake i think it was in like the 1960s 70s i, I did not write down the dates i apologize um they found like crosses and things <laughs> like stuff from before the crusades when it was a christian monastery how cool is that? That all that stuff was just, it just needed to be dug up a little more, and there it was. There's also a big mosque in Ajloon that, um, when an earthquake damaged part of it, they found an old Bible buried underground. Can you imagine? Like, that's so incredible. This wasn't the only little stamp that the Ottomans put on the area. Like I said, this corner is full of lush and beautiful forest and the Ottomans chopped down a lot of trees to use that wood for their building projects. They actually chopped down quite a lot of this old, old forest here. So in order to prevent anything like that from happening again, it is currently a reserve. It's a very protected area as I'm going to show you on Google Earth. And the area has just kind of followed Jordanian history, was controlled by the British for a minute, became part of Transjordan, which would just become Jordan after they lost the other side of the Jordan River, became Jordan. And that's pretty much where we are today, this neat little area here. I'm so excited to show you on Google Earth, so let me get into it. Like, I'm just trying to speed up the process so I can show you. Okay, whoop. make sure you can see. There we go. Okay, it's on the crease of my book. Let me scooch this over so I can. Nope, it's not going to be crooked. Okay, what if I did this? Okay, that's the best it's going to be. Actually, so actually, let me cancel this out. Um, you can kind of see the borders here. It's so hard to see the borders on Google Earth. Just a tiny little lines here. But nonetheless, they are there. They consist of this area. And you can see from up above all of the forest within. It's very, very green, isn't it? Let me zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. If you're like, what the heck is the Levant? Where is Jordan? Let me show you. So here you can see there's Turkey, there's the Arabian Peninsula, there's the Sinai, and Africa over here, and right in the middle of all that is an area known as the Levant, which is pretty much 
Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Israel, Palestinian territories, Lebanon, um, parts of Syria, and parts of Jordan, including this one. You can really tell the difference, right? You can see the rest of the landscape is very bone dry, except in this little corner up here. So, and of course, you can see here on the slideshow, the very first picture that pops up is Anjloon Castle, as it looks today. It is definitely the big tourist draw in the area. This is the minaret of the Grand Mosque. I'm thinking what happened here is that this is like the very old minaret and the rest has been rebuilt over time. But the minaret's still there. The reserve has these really cool lodges, really highly rated on TripAdvisor. Um, so you can actually like stay in the forest reserve and camp out there. But more of the castle here. You can tell this picture is super zoomed in, but you can pretty much see the castle from any angle of the town. It's more of the beautiful farmland. It almost looks Mediterranean, doesn't it? I guess it kind of is. It's just a stone's throw from the Mediterranean. Um, let's see. Oh, gorgeous. There's the town. The top of the castle. That's a great shot of the castle there. Very, very cool. Yeah, so that is the slideshow for, my goodness, the slideshow for the town. Let's head on in and investigate. So here's the town of Angelun. You can see Papa right up there. There's Anjloon Castle. If I put it in 3D, you can kind of get a scope of like the hilly areas around here. You can really see Anjloon is just between these two big hills here. So let's take a look. Not really impressive in 3D, is it? But there's the castle. I, I probably won't show you too many more photos because you've seen all the best ones already, but it is such a cool place is like like I said it's like you can't go to Angeloon as a tourist without going here it is the thing to see and it's just really cool to explore an old castle like this they've kept it really well maintained and it's all set up for tourists here's part of the museum it's really what I wanted to show you how cool is this right absolutely you more about what you can see from the view here because of course it was used as a lookout right lots of cool old mosaics here super cool okay we did look at all the pictures and then not far away in the hills here oop, we can see it's over here there it is tell mar elias elias i'm not sure so these are the monuments of an old, very, very old Christian monastery slash settlement. Like, pretty much like Roman times, you know, but not Byzantine times, Roman times. Like, um, like n not long after Jesus died times. <laughs> very, very old place. And... Another big tourist draw. There is still a very large Christian population in Anjloon. Um, I'd say it's about like 70-30 Muslims to Christians, which um, is still a significant population, isn't it? There's still lots of churches and things and um, lots of tourists come to see these old, old Christian sites. How cool is that? And then we have to look at the reserve, which is all over here. Let me see if I can find like the actual like entrance. There's like a little visitor center. Resort. Lots of things to see and do. I think this one is like a zip line. You can see the cabins here. Um, this is actually a research institute studying the nature. How cool is that? Loon Forest Reserve. This is the main entrance area. You can rent out a cabin and live in the woods as you explore Jordan. You 
even on a snowy day. How cool is that? And it has the most beautiful hiking trails all throughout. So many cool lookout points. Very fancy building. And so many beautiful plants and animals, and of course, the old ancient trees. What shall we take a look at? Let me just tap a random one. A little picnic area there. You can look out and see the beautiful forest. <laughs> Enjoy your meal. <laughs> look at this guy. They're having a great time. They're eating good food. They're exploring nature. It's so, it's so incredible. There's nothing like going out with your friends and family, especially your, your cool, crazy uncle. <laughs> and just being in the woods with the fam, right? That's the best. It's so fun. Let's see, why don't I try this? It might flash blue really brightly, so there it goes. Let's see if anyone's taken any cool photos around here. It's just on the roads. There's one see if this works. I haven't looked at this before. Usually I try to scope out everything to show you, but I have not looked at this yet. Let's see what we find. We are on a hiking trail. And what can we see? The beautiful landscape. Wow. Okay. Oh, there's a farm. Yeah, there it is. Check it out. There's the visitor center, which you already I think there's some more pictures of the woods area. How gorgeous, right? It almost kind of reminds me of like camping out in the woods in like the Midwest of America. How it's just cabins and then you're on your own. <laughs> Little things to do here and there, but you are in the trees. I like this. It shows you that this is the easy trail. This is the hard trail. It looks very little homes. All the little trails here you can explore, weaving all throughout these old ancient trees. So, so cool. And again, it's like when you think of like the Middle East, you don't think of this kind of landscape, do you? You don't picture beautiful, lush green forest. Let's check out this resort. Beautiful campground. Nora Resort. Oh my gosh, how luxurious. Oh, you can swim in the pool. There's your dinner, the dining hall. Snowy days. Ooh, that looks delicious. <laughs> so yeah, there's so much to do in this area. Especially if you love nature and history. There's so much to see. I think there's some hiking trails that lead to Tomorrowless. I have no idea how to pronounce that. But yeah. Here's the big city, that's like the suburb, here's the big old city. And um, I tried looking through here to show you some interesting stuff. There's some cool mosques, there's some cool churches, there's some cool monasteries, but um, that's about it. You can see all the farmland out here too. Let's see what this is. It's probably nothing. Oh, what could this be? Beautiful roads. <laughs> So yeah, it's just a very pretty little corner in this hilly section of Jordan. Very, very hilly. All these cool little valleys and things. It's so pretty. It's just I wish this area was a little bigger because there are so many cool sites around this area that I'd love to show you guys, but we are just looking at Ochlun right now. So that is all that I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this kind of content and you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing because this is an ongoing series on my channel. Next, we're going to hop down to the other end of the peninsula and check out the United Arab Emirates. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. I hope that you have a very good, good, good 